Hey everybody, it's Wendy with Crooked House Herbals. Welcome. I'm trying to be very good and be on time. <clears throat> and tonight we're going to talk about earth soup maintenance and respiratory health. Got a few more virus tips for you. And uh, first of all, for those of you that may not know me or this may be your first time, uh, I am Wendy Fargo. I am a master herbalist and an educator here in Arkansas. I um, am the founder of Crooked House Herbals <clears throat> and we are here tonight to have a, a natural herbal conversation for a little bit. I First of all, before we get too far into tonight's topic, I wanted to address a couple of things that were brought to my attention through the week. I had some people ask me some questions and I'm gonna try really hard to address them first and then we'll move on. First of all, can I see who's here? Anybody here? Tina's here. I see you, Tina. Yay! And Crystal and Not sure who else I'm seeing right at the moment. Becca. <clears throat> um, okay, well, anyway, I'll, I'm sure I'll see you as you guys get on board. Some of you aren't as prompt and as punctual as I am. But anyway, let's talk first of all about uh, one of the questions I had um, was, what is a cytokine storm? This seems to be the big buzzword, and hopefully you are not inundating yourself with media because every day is a new day on the television. They are pumping us full of information that hopefully will blow our minds and just make us go, okay, whatever you say, we'll do. But a cytokine storm is a real thing it's a part of biology and essentially without going into too much mind-blowing terminology it is um, <clears throat> when your immune system produces too many um, immune immune cells so their activating compound is a cytokine and sometimes your immune system Will release your body will release too many of them into the blood too quickly as a response to a serious infection or something inflammatory and it gets its messages crossed the cytokines are actually kind of like the little things that talk to your cells and talk to your tissues and um, they when there's too many of them happening too quickly they get their messages crossed so that's basically the essence of a cytokine storm. And normally, <clears throat> this will not happen in you. <laughs> You're not gonna just wake up one morning and go, oh, I'm having a cytokine storm. No, this happens when you are very sick and usually already very sick. It's not something that will make you sick. It happens as a response to being sick. So. The next part of that question was, does elderberry cause a cytokine storm? Because I have a lot of people who love elderberry and are taking it to boost their immune systems and then they were getting some other information and they were confused. And no, elderberry does not cause a cytokine storm. In fact, it actually will, <sighs> help you keep from ever having a cytokine storm. Elderberry is an amazing immune booster. On, uh, in the file that I uploaded for you for this week, there are uh, a document page, and there are several really good links that I put in there so you can do your own research. The whole idea with um, this forum that we're having here is not for me to sit here and tell you a bunch of stuff because you're getting that already on the television and who knows where. We, I'm here to actually just try to expose you to some things that will help you do your own homework and your own research and find out for yourself um, some of these answers. We are not a, a society of idiots. 
So it's time for us to do our own thinking. And everybody's earth suit is different. So what is good for me isn't necessarily good for you and vice versa. You've got to pay attention to your own bodies and your own rhythms and systems and figure out what's best for you. So that's what I'm here to help you do. I am not here to uh, replace anything else. I'm, I am not a doctor. I am not a diagnos diagnostician. I am not here to prescribe stuff for you. I am here to talk to you about what I know, my passion that I have been doing for eight years now and um, help and just be here as a voice of reason in another way. So feel free to ask me questions. Feel free to um, send me things via per, you know, uh, personal message or if you want to send me an email, www.crookedhouseherbals.com is the website. The email is wendy at crookedhouseherbals.com and you are welcome to contact me anytime <clears throat> and I will help you think things through. But I want you to do your own thinking that's that's my thing I I'm not here to just give you info and then have you get off the phone and go well that was great you know but I did give you some good um, good links and some good things to to start you off and then you can take that journey yourself so anyway elderberry is actually a gentle herb that um, is a broad spectrum herb so it's going to boost your immune system it's going to reduce inflammation and it's going to help your body stay in balance and strong so there's nothing about elderberry that you should be afraid of i think that the the one article that this person was um referring to had to do with uh a, an advanced stage case of respiratory arrest almost I mean they were just really really bad and the the actual <clears throat> the actual warning from that doctor was don't take any NSAIDs don't take anything like that and somehow elderberry got lumped in with all of that because elder, elderberry does reduce inflammation so just do your own thinking guys and and figure this out first of all let me just say this on behalf of all herbs they are our provision they were given to us because they are complete where we run into problems is when pharmaceutical companies or agencies want to they find these really good constituents and qualities in herbs and they say hey look what this does look what this does and then they try to extract just that out of the herb and then they and concentrate it into a drug well then you have an effect from that that constituent of the herb but you also have a major side effect and the reason for that is because the whole herb hasn't been used. The whole herb contains all the checks and balances, so it you won't have side effects. The only reason you would have a side effect is if you consumed a whole bunch of it and you, your body couldn't handle it and you would probably throw it up or something, or you were already taking a plethora of other drugs and you had some interaction. But the herb itself, if, it's, if you use the whole herb, is safe so remember that when you are thinking it when you are trying to compare herbs to drugs because they're not the same animal at all anyway enough of that okay so for what we want to talk about tonight is maintaining our earth suit by addressing our respiratory system I want to talk about some herbs that are um, real good at calming cytokine storms um, a lot of them you will be very familiar with and you're going to be super excited to know that most of them you either have growing or are easy, easy, easy to grow. You could incorporate it into your landscape that you have now currently. Um, <clears throat> so those, those herbs, let's just go ahead and cover that since we're already talking about cytokine storms and then we'll move on. Some of the herbs that are very good 
antivirals, but that are also um, cytokine storm calmers. <laughs> we'll give it an acronym. Somebody can work that up. Um, lemongrass. Lemongrass contains a chemical called citral. And I think I put an article in there for you that t talks a lot about citral and how they're using that in hospitals. And scientists are, are looking at it very closely because it does help calm cytokine storms. Cayenne pepper is another one that does that. The um, capsaicin. <clears throat> uh, but citral is being tested and used by scientists uh, right now to inhibit the production of cytokines. So that's a good one. And lemongrass is wonderful. I would recommend diffusing it all through your home. Drinking the lemongrass tea, a cup a day even, would, would just do you really, really a world of good. When I travel, I take lemongrass essential oil with me and I put it in my little neck diffuser. Um, I put it, I wear it so that I can breathe it and it's, it's wonderful. Um, clove bud is also an antiviral that also works in that same way as eucalyptus, thyme. How many of you have thyme growing? Cinnamon, bergamot, you know that yummy, yummy herb that's in Earl Grey tea. Um, lemon balm, you know Melissa. And rosemary, and here's a good one, patchouli. All of these are antivirals, but they also calm the cytokine storms. And lavender. Patchouli and lavender, you, you would probably have to use quite a bit of those in order to get the same kind of effect that you would get from lemongrass or cayenne pepper. But they still work. And if, if what you're trying to do is maintain your earth suit, you're not attacking anything major, then I would recommend finding one of these that floats your boat and using it a lot. Diffuse it, put it, cinnamon in your tea, put cinnamon in your juice. Um, it's easy, guys. You just have to think about it. So there's also a really great article that I put in your documents. I love it. It's all about um, the aromatic compounds, the essential oils, and the ones that are super good for viral infections. Of course, if anyone can guess, tea tree is on the top of that list. Um, <clears throat> also, there is uh, lemon balm, I think, is listed in there, and there's a whole list. I mean, there's a big chart. You will love that document. You're just going to want to read it for hours. It's really nice. So I put that in there for you. Also, something else that I would recommend that you get your hands on, <laughs> no pun intended, is thieves oil. I have a, a Crooked House Herbals has a, a thieves oil blend that we I do, but also um, the combination of those essential oils is an ancient, very old, antiviral, antibacterial barrier oil blend. It's something you can take internally. It's something that you can use as your hand sanitizer. You can clean with it. You can diffuse it in your in your diffusers. And it is a, it smells wonderful, um, but it's very, very powerful and it's friendly, you know, like the kids won't mind wearing it and you don't smell like um, something weird going out into public. Although <laughs> these days, who cares, right? You're six feet away from somebody anyway, so who cares what you smell like? But <clears throat> thieves oil is a good one. That is also listed. It is also a really good immune booster. So you get a two for one on that one. You get the barrier oils, but you also have the other um, immune boosting properties. Okay, real quick, just a little bit more information to make you crazy. There's three distinct phases of flu, of influenza. There's an early onset stage. There is a mild, um, what am I trying to say? A mild infection, okay? And then there's the severe infection. So just real quick, this is all in your document, so I'm not gonna just um, repeat them for the sake of repeating them, but I, I put some things in here that are other ideas that maybe uh, you haven't thought about. For an early onset 
um, maintenance protection type um, regimen like if you feel like maybe either you think you've been exposed to the flu or you maybe have a scratchy throat or you know you just you're not sure um, there is a recipe in here for what I'm calling ginger juice okay and it's pretty it's pretty easy and it's powerful you can kick stuff easily with this um, it's not like my active immune which is an acquired taste and rather stout but that stuff will kick anything <laughs> including your I mean it, it, it will really it's very very powerful but the ginger juice is something you could even maybe convince the husband to drink or the kids you know it's not bad it's got honey in it it's ginger it's it's, it's nice but there's ginger juice and there are three herbs in particular red root licorice and no, I guess there's only two. Oh, echinacea. But let me tell you this about echinacea, because a lot of people think, oh, you know, I always just take echinacea and golden seal when and when I think I'm getting something and I'm good to go. But the thing about echinacea, it is a powerful, powerful antiviral. But it can only it only works right then, like when you know for sure you would have to do it the moment you felt the symptoms and get it to because it has to attach right to those cells so get it, catching it right at the right time is the tricky part and with our lifestyles the way I are people you know they are people blow stuff off until a couple days later and they go yeah you know I've had this sore throat now for a couple days and um, so you have to be really in tune with your earth suit to be able to go Hmm, something's not right not feeling good not feeling exactly right and get the echinacea in you right then if you do it'll knock it golden seal same way although golden seal tastes nasty so you would need to get it in a form that you could tolerate it's rough tincture goes straight down or maybe a capsule <clears throat> but golden seal and echinacea have been tried and true um, immune boosters and um, viral fighters for years but it's the timing on that okay just remember that the red root um, is also a bitter root and it's an astringent so it's but it is a or it, it really works on your lymphatic system so astringents pull things together and dry things pull things down and so it, it clears your lymph system it's a really really great herb if you combine the red root and the licorice root and the ginger juice you've got a powerful little combination that can make it happen for you if you are like I said feel like maybe you've been exposed or you know not just, just not feeling really good um, licorice is best in a tincture the only thing I will say about licorice is if you have high blood pressure you need to use probably less licorice and more of the others because it will have a t tendency to elevate blood pressure in some people so you just have to be careful with that um, it is it's really good for food poisoning too by the way li licorice root is um, but it's uh, it's an anti-inflammatory and it's an immune booster so you put those three together with this fantastic ginger juice that you, I gave you the recipe for and you've got your set Elderberry syrup, again, is another one that would be something that would, you know, three times a day for a couple days with elderberry, and you would probably be good to go. But you don't always have that. So that's why I'm giving you as many, as many ideas as possible because, you know, it's likely that you can get your hands on something, right? For a mild infection, I would suggest the, anti, the active immune tonic oh my gosh that stuff kicks it and I think that you would um, probably benefit from that really well the ginger juice is also good for that um, but those would be my two because the active immune's got cayenne pepper in it and onion and ginger and it's it, it's really powerful so I think that you know couple two three shots of that and you would probably be set right and and ready to go 
a severe infection, there are some some other herbs for that and I listed them for you in the document and I am also going to work on a, I'm going to put them together. Most of these, oddly enough, I'm already growing and I already have. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make one of these powerful tinctures. Actually, I think I'll make two. One that's going to address the, kill the virus, you know, work on the virus just head on. And the other one will help with rebuilding tissue and reconstructing, bringing you back after, you know, with a severe infection, you will most likely have some tissue damage and some other things happening. So that is coming. I would welcome anybody who has any fun names for that. You, if any of you know me and you know my products, you know I love naming things fun and I love making them uh, something you want to take off the shelf. So I'm taking ideas for those two tinctures. Take a look at the uh, the processes and the things that they'll be addressing in your um, documents and you can see what that's all about. Okay, on to respiratory health. Now, the reason I want to talk about this is because all the the words are <laughs> the words that coming down the pike this week are you know um, the coronavirus gives you respiratory issues because it does this and it does that and it damages and it attacks your lungs and attacks your spleen and attacks your lymph system those are the three major things that they've been saying are all wrapped up with this virus well it makes sense then, doesn't it, if that's really true, that uh, you need to have a bolstered, healthy immune system. So those of you that have, for one reason or another, trash yours, maybe you have been a long-term smoker or you have uh, some other kind of you know, situation, COPD or whatever, it's gonna be more important for you um, to, to address your, health, your respiratory health daily um, preferably naturally just because those types of things your body will accept and use easier than drugs drugs will always have a side effect and they will always cause some other issue so natural natural remedies they may take longer but they are um, utilized by your body in a better way okay one of my personal favorites let's just let's just talk about this first the herbs that support lung health typically do so by offering one or more of the following benefits they are an expectorant so they help you break up mucus and stuff in your chest and loosen up that chest congestion they'll um, soothe irritated nasal passages and airways which mine have been playing games with me lately um, relax the muscles near the upper respiratory system so that it will quell a cough and bring your cough coughing down it'll calm the release of histamines so those of you that have allergy issues and I'm I'm telling you I don't normally have allergy issues but this spring is different we've had so much rain and we've had so many things I am just um, very awakened to everything that's growing it's amazing um, it will fight the harmful or organisms that produce uh, respiratory concerns okay bacteria um, and things like that that uh, attack your lungs um, there may be they are some most of these herbs that we're gonna talk about are a source of antioxidants as well and oxidative damage it, occurs in the lungs and the respiratory system a lot. You know, you'll hear people say, you know, I get bronchitis every year. Every year I get it. And I think, hmm. So there's something that triggers it and most of the time it's probably spring or maybe summer. And um, it's, you know, there's several things that trigger it, but uh, increasing your, your intake of antioxidants can help you get over that hump. I've also heard people say, I don't get that anymore. So that's what we want. And you have to remember, every 11 months, we get all new cells. So get on a track and keep moving in that direction. 
Just keep moving in that direction and moving in that direction. Everything positive that you do will benefit you. It will pay off. So my first pick, my first favorite respiratory herb is mullein. And you can find mullein coming up everywhere right now. It is that pretty fuzzy herb that grows in a like a rosette. It'll start in a rosette and its leaves come up and it's real soft and real fuzzy and then it'll get real tall with this real pretty yellow flower stalk. That herb was designed for your respiratory system. I would not recommend harvesting or wild crafting any that's like, you know, on the railroad tracks or anything. It does like to grow in kind of waste areas, so it's not going to be in the middle of the forest usually, although I've had some out there, but <clears throat> I you'll find it more in areas like under things and in on walkways and, you know, it doesn't mind. <laughs> it grows. So, mullein. It is used for coughing for whooping cough, TB, bronchitis, uh, even just a hoarseness in your throat, pneumonia, earaches. I have it in many of my products because I love, love, love it. It's great for asthma. The Native Americans used to smoke it for asthma. I haven't quite figured all that out yet, but you know, they would smoke it and it would go in and it would, it would cure their asthma or take care of it. Um, it has many, many other things. It's good for um, migraine headaches because it's a dilator. Um, it's good for colic. It's good for joint pain and gout. Mullen is just a beautiful, beautiful herb. Super easy. And you can find it everywhere here. So, depending on where you live, you might have to look a little harder or maybe plant some and grow it. But it'll grow and it will. you will love it. The next herb that I would talk about, you're also probably really familiar with, and that is eucalyptus. Eucalyptus is um, an aromatic er herb, and it's got a lot of oil in it. Therefore, that is going to be one that's going to be good for um, diffusing. Uh, it's great for chest congestion, good for colds, good for bronchitis. It's antimicrobial. Um, it's very good for respiratory infections. So, eucalyptus. Three is a, an herb some of you might not be as familiar with. It's called lungwort, okay? Lungwort <laughs> treats breathing conditions. It was appropriately named. It does uh, some other things. It works really well with your intestines and your stomach as well, but primarily it's going to address the uh, respiratory system. It's also really, really good though for kidney problems and urinary tract infections. Who knew, right? Lungwort. Oregano. Another one you know. Some of you may even have it growing. That's another aromatic one. It would be good to use as an oil, but also as a tea. Um, it, it, um, it's a natural decongestant, and it's also one that reduces histamines. So if you have allergy issues, you know, um, utilize oregano. It's, it's, easy and it's here and it's not anything you know that you've got to to learn about even everybody's got oregano right um <clears throat> respiratory tract nasal passage flow it's also a, a good free radical fighter i mean everybody needs to have oregano oil in their house it's a good one um plantain my personal favorite in fact i did my master herbalist thesis on this this herb i love it so much but it has also been used for hundreds of years for coughs and for irritated mucous membranes. And um, clinical trials have found it, it's really favorable for coughs and colds and lung irritations. Plantain is also <laughs> one of the best things that you can use for many things, including insect bites. It's, it sucks out toxins. It's a toxin sucker. So. Plantain, again, grows in the cracks of sidewalks, people. It's everywhere. So this is an herb that, and if you live in Arkansas, I guarantee you it's in your yard. So Google it. Get some pictures of it. You can identify plantain because it has deep 
vertical veins in the leaves. It's not going to have any horizontal veins that you can see with the naked eye very well. It's going to have deep horizontal. There is a broadleaf um, plantain and there's a narrow leaf plantain. Both of them work the same. So if you have any other questions about that, feel free to, like I said, message me or email me or whatever and I will definitely talk you through plantain because that is my baby. Okay, there's a few others. Elm Campaign, I don't know if some of you might not be as uh, familiar with that one. It is excellent for bronchial issues. Um, it's an expectorant. It's it's a really great herb too. Lobelia, I call it the smart herb because it is one of those herbs that um, literally will tell uh, other herbs where they're needed. It it's a it directs it directs other herbs to the places in your body that need it. But the the um, alkaloid in um, lobelia breaks down mucus, breaks down con um, congestion. Um, it is included in a lot of cough remedies and a lot of um, those kinds of things. My, my one warning with lobelia is if you take too much of it, uh, you'll probably throw it up. It's an emetic as well. It'll make you puke. But, I mean, that's the worst thing that happen. You'll just throw it up. But it is amazing. So, include it in your little, in your formula, or in your combination of things, just a little lobelia, because it really works. Chaparral is a lung detoxifier and a respiratory support herb. It is also a major anti-cancer herb. Peppermint. We all know peppermint. Peppermint oil is it's got menthol and the menthol is amazing for your respiratory system it's simple but it's true drink peppermint tea use peppermint oil diffuse it put it on at night um, it doesn't just help you breathe better which it does do that but it relaxes um, the smooth mus muscles in your respiratory system so it opens up your breathing passages and that's how come it makes you feel better because it, it's a relaxant in that case. Um, it is also has an antihistamine effect. So it's good for those of you that suffer with allergies. Um, major, good decongestant. Uh, it's, you know, you've had peppermint and stuff forever. Menthol, menthol. What, how many of you guys had Vicks on you or mentholatum when you were a kid? My mom used to put it on me all the time. We always had it up our nose, on our chest, you know. Thanks, Mom, because I love the smell. Um, another one is osha root, which is uh, found more often in the, um, like in Colorado, in the Rocky Mountain areas. It's a more um, dry, mountainous herb in that sense, but really fights um, a lot of the respiratory issues. It's great. So OSHA root is lung support. So if you have a serious lung, you know, if you're already struggling with respiratory issues, get your hands on some OSHA root tincture and start taking it. It's not, it's kind of bitter, so it's not a great tea, but the tincture is fine. Just use the tincture and um, um, use it. It'll help. You'll notice that your sinuses start feeling better. You'll notice that a lot of things clearing up. But it, it really, um, for people that struggle to take a deep breath, this is the route for you, okay? And the last one that I want to talk about is astragalus. I talked about it a little bit last week, but again, it fits into this equation as well. It boosts your immune system, but it also fights viruses, and it is really, really good for respiratory infections. So I've, in fact, I think I included in your documents, I think I included a, a, an actual, I either included the list or the chart or a link where you can see all of the benefits of astragalus. I use astragalus in a lot of my products. It's in my Vital Lift Immune Tincture. It's in several of the things that I make because it's, it's one of those broad spectrum herbs as well that covers a lot of bases. <clears throat> It fights viruses. That's our main thing right now, right? We're on the virus thing. So check it out. I've given you some links on those. Uh, what's the best defense against the CO, against COVID? Well, we're talking about all of those right now. The best defense, in my opinion, is the one you're going to use. 
and it's the one that you can get your hands on. So if you're living in the city and you don't, you're not able to grow stuff, um, then you need to connect with either an herbalist, you know, like me or someone that, preferably somebody that you know grows their own herbs, like I do, um, or a, a good source for the, um, these things that I'm talking about. I would say elderberry syrup is the best place to start. Elderberry and possibly like the Vital Lift Immune Tincture that's got the astragalus and the cordyceps, you know, the mushrooms and um, those things that are seriously antiviral and also have the polysaccharides that make it so that the virus can't stick to your cells as easy. That's what you're looking for. If you don't have it and you want the defense against it, those are the things I would recommend first off. And drinking things like pine needle tea, and oh, which, by the way, I have mine right here. And um, diffusing lemongrass in your house, or um, you know, wearing it, you know, putting it in your system, Lem lemongrass or clove, or make a little mixture of some good essential oils, and keep those circulating in your air that you're breathing. Wash your hands. Those are the things I would do to defend defend okay all right <clears throat> now the the products that I carry that if, if anyone that's interested for respiratory health I have a really good respiratory tea and all of the ingredients to my products are on my website under the resources tab so you'd click resources and then you would scroll down and find the product you were looking for and that will tell you what's in it and how to use it but I have a real good respiratory tea. I have a real good respiratory tincture, which is made from that same formula, only it's a tincture, not a tea. And I have um, an excellent comfort cough um, elixir. I have peppermint stick, which is an essential oil roll-on that is real good for carrying with you or using at night. And I also have Essiac tea. Essiac tea is not my formula. It was made by Renee um, Cassie, and she was a Canadian nurse many, many years ago, and she created that formula for her parent, for her parents, for her patients, um, because it is a, a, a major detoxification formula, and it also fights cancer, particularly lung cancer was what she was working with. So. Um, it improves your immune system. It bolsters your immune system and, and gives you some good um, fighting power. Okay, so those are the things that I have. Now, what I'm hoping is that, I mean, you're, and of course I have elderberry syrup and I have active immune, but um, for those of you that are, you know, able to uh, grow some of your own things or you have some stuff growing or you have access to some areas where you can wildcraft, you can pick up any of these kinds of herbs and, you know, dry them. Um, plantain tinctures really well fresh um, and start working, you know, even just dry them and make teas and drink them. Uh, it just get them in you. Your body will say thank you. And it's the best way to maintain your earth suit because we are from the earth. And I think that that is the best thing you can do. That and maintaining a very, very positive, joyful, joyous outlook. These are weird times and it's never, it's not been very comfortable for any of us, but honestly, I think some really good things are gonna come from this if people will take a look at it and, and realize that what it's forcing you to do is probably what you should have done a long time ago as far as slowing down, spending more time with family, spending more time disconnected from the busyness of the world and enjoying your own personal space, your own, um, your own hobbies, your own passions. Some of you don't even know what they are. So this is a good time for you to, to start exploring those things in that aspect of your life. That is all super important. And I'm telling you right now, as somebody who ended up with cancer as a result of stress, you don't want to go there. You need to learn how to meditate, 
learn how to breathe, learn how to laugh. I mean, there's a lot of science behind laughter. So spend some time laughing. Turn off the TV, stop listening to the droning, and spend the time doing the things that you know will help keep you well and benefit you. You might be surprised how this all turns out. You really might. Now, I'll get off that soapbox. I have one more thing I wanna talk about that is very antiviral and it's maybe gonna surprise you a little bit. It is, dun, 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 copper. I'm drinking my pine needle tea from my copper cup. Copper is amazing. And I have given you some links. I have put them down there for you. Do your own research, but I'm just gonna tell you, copper has been widely used as an antiviral agent because it has a broad spectrum antiviral activity. It is amazing. And a lot of institutions are starting to replace a lot of the things that are touched often with copper. I'm not going to tell you too much more about it, but I will tell you it destroys the MRSA virus at touch. It is, um, it shows, new research is showing that copper can destroy the MRSA by touching the fing and fingertipping the contamination of surfaces. So you've got, I take this with me and when I can't use any hand sanitizer, I don't have anything like that, what do I do? I just rub my copper. Okay, and then when I get a chance, I wash my copper. Okay, so it kills viruses. There are some websites that have copper wands that you actually like stick up your nose and, and kill, the, kill the viruses in your nose. People have been using them for years, they don't ever get colds. So check into copper, do your own research, see what you find out. A um, couple of those, I put two articles on there, one of them is like, really technical and the other one is a little more general so start slow and work up yes I love my cup and I have a decanter a copper decanter that is filled with my pine needle tea as well isn't it lovely um, by the way copper keeps things cold a long time they're amazing I can see now why they make certain drinks with those because they're nice so anyway that's what I wanted to talk to you tonight. I know I went a little long, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you're okay with that. I also wanna to talk to the kids for just a minute. Um, this, this week you had two coloring pictures, I think. Yes, you did. And um, one of them said, don't be a host, because we've been hearing that a lot. That's been another buzzword on TV. Don't be a host, don't be a host. Well, kids, host, when you're a host, uh, when you have someone over to your house, you're hosting them. You are inviting them in. You um, host a party, or you host a wedding, or you you usually it's a gathering, or it's a collection of people. Well, in this case, they're saying don't invite the coronavirus in. Do not be a host. And there are the obvious ways. Um, that they speak of about you know washing your hands and keeping your distance and blah 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 but there's some other ways that you can not be a host um, by making your immune system stronger that's one way that you will not be a host um, getting out into the sunshine whenever we have it and fresh air eating good healthy food and drinking lots of yummy herbal teas and fresh good water um, so those are ways that you will not be a host of course <laughs> a host washing your hands for 20 seconds it's the friction that kills things okay the soap helps but the friction is what does it so wash your hands for 20 seconds and um, stay away from people that you know um, so that you're not getting their breath on you. Their breath has spit in it and the virus flows in the spit. So you don't wanna get the ooey spit on you, okay? So that's why they say six feet. So just, you know, keep a distance in case somebody 
talks with a lot of spit, okay? So, I would love to see your coloring pictures. Please color them and post them and tag Crooked House Herbals so we can share them with everybody. The other one is a really great little, here I'll show you a picture of it, a nice little recipe for your own Don't Be a Host Cider Tonic. It's, it's a really yummy one. You can make it for mom and dad and sisters and brothers and all of you share it together. Very easy to make, very antiviral, very good for your earth suit and will keep you healthy so that you do not become a host. So that's it for this week. I look forward to seeing you again next week and I promise I won't be as long. I'm sorry I went longer today. I just had a lot of things that I wanted to address and I wanted to answer your questions. I hope that I did. I hope that everybody is, uh, let's see, what do we got here? Good to know about licorice. Um, what's the best defense? I think I answered that one. Um, uh, alkaline water, I would, I would stick with distilled water if I were you and apple cider vinegar and honey. I think that that's a better situation right now. Um, alkaline water can mess you up in other ways if you drink too much of it. And then you have to go with, you know, being, you know, making sure you don't drink too much of this and don't do that. Just keep it simple. Just drink distilled water. If you don't have distilled water, well, I've said it before, I think one of the best things to do is buy a countertop water distiller. They cost a hundred bucks. Then it doesn't matter what you get. Throw it through the distiller and it's all clean. Distilled water is hungry water. It'll start pulling toxins out and pulling things that your body doesn't need. It leaves everything else intact. It's awesome. And um, i that's my recommendation. So again, that's what I would do. That's what I do do. I've been drinking distilled water for years. So bless you all. I love you guys. Thank you for joining me and please let me know if I can help you in any other way. We're doing this because nature heals you best. Adios. Have a great week. Wait, weekend. And I will see you next week.